God wants you to be the light of the world. He, this, this world is so full of darkness. He, he wants his children in every place, in every city, wherever you're at. He wants you to be a light and an example uh, as his child, as his son, as his daughter in the place where you're at, in the place where you're located. Because we can, it's easy for us to look to other people and say, and wait on other people to do something. But God, he wants us as his children to be an example in the place where we are, in the place where you are. An example, what is, what is being an example of Christ? An example is by your fruit and your character. So many people go by the fruit. Somebody, so many people go by the gifts. It's not about the gifts. It's all about, it's about your character and the fruit and, the, and your attitudes and your motives and the way you act. That's being a Christian. This is what really being a Christian is. This is what it's really all about. One second. So this is how he wants you to be a light. He says, you are the light of the world now. We are supposed to be the light of the world now. It's not Jesus is the light of the world. But since he's inside of us, he wants us to be the light of the world now. And this is what he wants us to do. And so don't neglect this. Don't neglect the fruit. If you want to read about the fruit, you go and read in Galatians chapter five. It talks about the fruit. This is what being a Christian is, is the fruit bearing good fruit, have, showing a good character, showing good attitude, showing good motive, showing good being the type of person that as the light Christ wants you to be. This is how this is what he wants. So many people go around, they have bad character and they try to tell people about Jesus. Don't do that. Because you're dishonoring and discrediting the name of Jesus. You're bringing embarrassment to Jesus. You have a bad character, bad attitude, especially toward unbelievers. Don't even do it because now they're going to connect the way you are with all Christians. And they're going to connect and assume that Jesus is like that. Don't do it. Bring the fruit first. Bring the character. Bring the attitudes. Bring the loving attitude, the loving characters first. And then if you want to tell someone about Jesus. But show by your life the, the light of Christ. Show by your light the light. Show by your life the light of Christ Because there's so much darkness in the world And God, he wants you as a woman of God As a, as a daughter, a son As a man of God He wants you to Be a little speck of light Like a little gem In each place Because there's not a lot of light And this is how he wants you to do it Is by listening and obeying, to, obeying his word And following him And believing his words and he said, my sheep hear my voice and they don't follow anyone else. You can go read that. He said, I'm the way. It's a way. Being a Christian, walking with Christ is the way. So the, the light is a path. And this is how we have to walk down. We have to walk down the path of light. The path, the path of life. This is, this is what God wants us to do. Brothers and sisters, it's so important right now, especially in these last days, that Jesus has examples of himself in every place and he wants you to be that be a light be a light don't be an irritant <laughs> don't be annoying but be a light what does the light do the fire when it's on what happens it automatically brings light to the darkness what happens it, the fire the flame from a fire doesn't say need to say look i'm a fire you don't need to you know you shouldn't you shouldn't have to go around saying Look, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. You tell people when you get a chance, when God opens a door or something like that, without trying to thrust it down, you know, and trying to force it on people. But a fire doesn't need to say, I'm a fire. Look at me. Look at no. When the light comes on, the light doesn't need to say, I'm the light. Look at me. It automatically shines and people recognize it and see it. And so this is what we need. We need the Holy Spirit. And one um, you can read, I believe. It's in the book of Acts, I think 24, I think chapter 24, verse 17, I, I believe it is. And it talks about how we need to always keep our conscience clear. A conscience that is constantly free from offense toward God and offense toward people. A conscience that's always keeping your conscience clear. If you feel convicted about something or, you, or your conscience can, convicts you about something or you feel guilty about something that you did wrong or you something that you know Something that you know you did wrong. You confess it to God. You don't need to go around confessing your sin to people unless you specifically hurt a, a specific person. But you always, we always need to keep our conscience clear. And immediately when a, a bad thought comes up or a bad, uh, you know, you gave in, you sinned for even one second, whatever it is, you confess it to God right away. Oh, I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry. Forgive me. 
not only forgive me, but save me from that evil thought. I never want to think like that again. I never want to think down on that person again. I never want to be irritated again. I never want, we can have, see a lot of people don't know, a lot of Christians don't know, but we could be free from bad moods. It's actually possible <laughs> to have joy every single day. A lot of preachers aren't talking about this, but as you constantly look to keep your conscience clear, your conscience clear, and have a, a pure heart with God, walking on a daily basis and listening to him. See, God speaks through the conscience. That's how he speaks through. So when uh, you're convicted about something that you did wrong, or, or your, your conscience tells you, or you feel guilty about some sin, something wrong you did or thought or some bad attitude that you had, that's God speaking to you through your conscience. So that means you must cleanse it and clear it right away and get rid of it. It's like, again, it's like, um, it's like, like a seed, a seed when it breaks, if it has a piece of shell and you break the shell, then the seed grows. So the more we keep our conscience clear, the more we walk with Jesus, the more we're the light and the more we cleanse yourself from purify. The Bible says to purify yourself from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. And when you do this, you become more joyful. You'll become more loving. The fruit of the spirit will become more rev relevant in your life, will become more alive. And you'll, the more of the life of Jesus Christ will be manifested in you. The more peace, the more of the world that we pushed out and the more the people will see around you at your job and your family your, in, in the store, everywhere, they'll see a light about you. They'll see a joy of Christ and they'll see the spirit of Jesus on you. The character, the, his Holy Spirit, the attitudes of his Holy Spirit. This is what we're supposed to have. So it's the primary mark of a Christian as being a light is we have to be, be a light we have to be in the spirit, constantly cleansing ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. And like this, the more of the light of Jesus will shine. Okay, if you have a flashlight, for example, right? You have a flashlight and on, do you have a bunch of dirt and stuff blocking the, the light from coming out? What do you do? What do you do? You could say, I'm sorry for having all that dirt on there. But, and a person will say, like for example, maybe it's someone's flashlight or whatever, and the person will say, oh, I forgive you, but now you still have to cleanse it. And that you still have to um, remove it, okay? So the more dirt you remove from the lens of the flashlight, the more light will come out, you see? So the more dirt and the more filthiness we constantly cleanse from our spirit, and that's, that means you also have to sacrifice what you watch. Be careful what you watch. Don't put everything before your eyes, things that are wrong. If your conscience and God is telling you in your heart, no, you shouldn't be watching that. Don't watch that. That's not good for you. Don't listen to that music. Don't look at that video. It's got cursing in it. It's got a little filthy in it. A little filthy dirt. It's polluted. It's got some sex scenes. It's got some uh, naked. It's got some nude. Don't look at it. Don't watch it. Don't, don't pollute your mind. When you listen to him, you'll constantly be cleansing yourself from your spirit. Cleansing yourself in your spirit from all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit. And like this, you keep going and more and more and more the light of your life will shine. Brighter and brighter and brighter. It talks about that in Proverbs. It says that the light, the righteous are like the sun which shines brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. I'll put that down in the, in the description too. It's in Proverbs, it talks about that. So brothers and sisters, God bless you. Continue to be the light. God wants you. He wants you to be a gem for him. There's very few of us in this world. Very few that's going to watch this video are going to take this serious. But God wants you to be that, that wholehearted gem where you're at. The wholehearted believer. That wholehearted lover of Christ that's dedicated, loyal to him. That's not going to compromise to this world. That's not going to love money. That's not going to believe every Tom, Dick, and Harry. And not going to believe every false preacher. And that wants to seek him and his righteousness. And wants his name and his, his name and his honor to be, his name to be glorified and the honor to go to him and him, for him to take all the credit. This is what he's looking for. And someone that'll walk in humility and love and show people around the love and the, the peace and the joy of Christ, the love and the humility of Jesus. Don't put on fake humility, that's fake. Don't be fake, God doesn't like hypocrites. That's one thing he had a problem with in scripture all the time was hypocrites, God doesn't want hypocrites. But be for real, wherever you're at in your walk with Christ, help him. Uh, ask him to help you and he will. And the more you do this, it's not a burden. 
He says, do things out of a love for him. He said, if you love me, keep my commandment. You know what he was saying in John? He was saying, if you do something, do it out of love for me. That's what he's saying. If you don't want to do something, don't do it. Because if, if you don't want to do it uh, out of love for me, it's a dead work. It's meaningless. Just like in Corinthians, it talks about how you must give cheerfully. God wants us to give cheerfully. He wants to give our time cheerfully. He wants to give everything cheerfully, money cheerfully, everything cheerfully. Out of a heart, not of grudgingly or, or compulsion, but cheerfully out of, out of a love for him. So be a light where you're at. It's very important now in these times that we're living in. It's so, so important that he, you're a light. He needs this. God needs you to be a light. He wants you to be a light. You'll be open and listen to him. And constantly, if, if you're convicted about something, deal with it right away. Pay back the things that, um, you know, uh, ask people for forgiveness that you need to and uh, settle things. Time is so short. Time is so short. He needs you to be a light. He wants you to be a special light in the place that you're at because there's very few of us so people can see Jesus Christ. So people can see that, there's a re that Jesus is alive and he's for real and that he exists and that he can be in the person. In Jesus' name, God bless.